I'll be talking now about Keynes neighborhood regression. Um, this corresponds to the chapter 3.5 of the uh, Introduction to Statistical Learning book. So we've seen before the linear regression as a parametric model. Uh, this model has uh, several advantages, it's quite simple, simple to fit, it's simple to interpret, it's very well studied. But uh, there's, there are strong assumptions with the, with the model, in particular, the functional form that relates, associates the, uh, the covariates or the predictors with the outcome. Okay? So the, li the linearity is a really strong assumption uh, um, uh, in terms of association between the, the predictors and, um, uh, and the outcome. Um, we could think about other approaches. We're going to look at this uh, uh, Keynes neighbors regression which is a non-parametric uh, approach. And what it does is, um, so we still have the same problem. We want to predict Y out of uh, uh, a set of X's. I'm going to, once again, just focus on one single X for simplicity. We'll talk about extending this for multiple predict predictors afterwards. But we want to estimate this functional form, this F. And I'm going to do this, uh, as I said, in a non-parametric fashion. Basically, I'm going to take the average of values in the uh, in my data. Okay, so the the prediction, uh, the 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 estimation of the uh, the functional form is going to be based on an average of uh, outcome observed values. So let's explain this in a graphic way that it's more uh, helpful. So suppose we are back in our example where uh, I'm interested in predicting bone mineral density with the variable age. So I have here plotted the 169 uh, individuals um, with a certain age and a certain BMD. And suppose that we want to predict the BMD, the bone mineral density, for someone who's 40 years old. And I'm going to use nine uh, neighbors. Okay, so I'm. I want to predict the BMD for someone uh, of age 40. So I'm going to use the closest uh, nine values that I have on the data for that prediction. So I'm going to, to choose the, the nine closest values around the age of 40. And then I'm going to average the, the BMD of these nine individuals. And that's going to be my prediction for the age of 40. Okay. So we could go on and let's say now we want for uh, the age of 41, so I'll get now the nine closest um, uh, 41, uh, nine closest values to the age of 41, get the average of PMD, and that would be my prediction, and so on. Okay, and actually I could make predictions over the entire range of this this interval. Um, so what number? What about the number of of neighbors? Well, we can choose whatever we want. We can start by choosing uh, one neighbor. Um, so basically, I'll be fitting uh, uh, this this broken line uh, across all the, the the data points that I have. Um, so you can see the the prediction for someone of this age. It's going to be the single point that I have in the data set. Okay, and someone close to this age is, is still going to have that BMD. That's why this we have this stepped line because. Um, once the age is still close to an observed value, the, BM, the predicted BMD is that observed value. But when it's getting close to another value, then the predicted BMD uh, is changed to, 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 uh, to that other value. Okay, so we have this stepped line that is fitted across all the data points. This is obviously overfitting the data, so it, it has an excellent performance in terms of prediction on my data, but if I take this to another data set, it will uh, uh, most likely perform very, very poorly. So that would be the line for uh, one neighbor. This would be line for uh, three neighbors, k equals three, k being the number of neighbors. And as you can see, this the, the line starts becoming a little bit more smooth. Nine neighbors, 20 neighbors, okay? And if you compare this, the 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 line obtained with the, the 20 neighbors with linear regression, you can see that it starts really approximating. So lin linear regression was not that that bad of a, um, a model for the relationship between age and BMD. 
so the k equals one so one neighbor uh, produces the, the perfect fit but as i said it clearly overfit the data um, so how can we choose the number of neighbors which is which is the best number of neighbors to consider in such method well we're not going to uh, I'm not going to give you an answer now. We're later going to, see, to talk about uh, cross-validation, and that would be a way of uh, uh, choosing the K by fitting, um, by fitting the K and N in, uh, in a part of the data set and then validating in a different part of the data set. Okay? So we would be sort of uh, um, analyzing its performance uh, in a separate data set. Okay? But we're not going to, to go into that now. Um, we could uh, look at the comparison uh, with the statistics that we've talked uh, uh, talked about before. So here I have the comparison with the linear model, so age only in the model, uh, cu cubic age, so this would be a linear model with age, age square and age cube, um, K and N with 20 neighbors, 9, 3 and 1, and you can see the mean square error is going to decrease especially with the KNN because I'll start overfitting the data, right? And when I completely overfit the data, the mean square error, the error that I'm making in that, in those data, it's zero, okay? And if you recall, the R square is really a rescaling of the mean square error. So the same thing happens with R square. When uh, I completely overfit the data, the R square uh, is going to be one. And you could think that, you know, the adjusted R square uh, could solve this issue as it does for the linear regression and that would be uh, a natural way of thinking but actually the properties of r squared don't really adjusted r squared sorry don't really extend to k and n so it's not going to be a really a good statistics to evaluate the the fitting of the model as i said in, in the previous slide we're going to use cross validation to estimate the, the, the correct mean square error uh, using sort of independent data so the idea of the knn uh, can can be extended to multiple predictors. So here I have two predictors. So this could be like age and the second predictor like weight. Um, and rather than that fitting that uh, stepped line, I'm now fitting a stepped plane, uh, this stepped surface. Um, and of course, the more neighbors I consider, the more smooth this surface is, 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 is will be will be. The problem is with this method, although it being simple and appealing, is the curse of dimensionality. So if I have too many predictors, um, it's going to be very hard to find in such a, in, in a such high dimension uh, points close, so neighbors to the, 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 the value that I want to predict for. Okay, so I have represented here. So I have, if I have one dimension, it's you get all the data sort of um, uh, close together, so it's easy to find to find neighbors in the in the in the, in two, two dimensions. The same thing, but when I start going up, you can see that uh, that the, the data starts becoming sparse. So I'm diluting these 169 observations through a big dimensional space. So I start getting uh, very sparse neighborhoods. So when I when I'm I have to average close points, these points are actually not very close. So it really breaks down very quickly with a lot of, of predictions. Okay, but it's a, a simple method to fit in uh, in situations where we don't have high uh, dimensionality. So have a look at uh, uh, the, the the lab. Um, so the solved sort of guided exercises and then try to uh, solve also the exercises that I've proposed at the end of, of the, um, the notes.